Back in August, Chris Short spent five cold nights on Mount Tongariro. Terminally ill, he put his body on the line to protest against the slaughter taking place in our forests. Well, now staring death in the face, he's more determined than ever. His last request is that we show you the pictures he so long wanted you to see. The animals and the birds, he says, that are dying in their droves. But is he right? Are we poisoning paradise? Karen McCarthy went to find out. This is beautiful bush. Anywhere you're not down on your hands and knees is beautiful bush. <laughs> Chris Short is a man dying to make his point. So there's definitely one around here. Um, chances are he's somewhere really close to here. Six months ago, this old school bushman, a possum trapper all his working life, was diagnosed with terminal cancer. An inoperable tumour on his kidney, his health is fast failing. 60,000 possums have been through this trap at least. This is one of my first original ones. Don't catch me another possum yet. Oh, catch myself. But the fight in him is still strong, perhaps stronger than ever. It's not over till it's over, and it ain't over yet. The end is just beginning. Um, there's a lot of work to be done yet. Following a lead from friends of the wanted man, three national news flew into the area where he was believed to be holed up. This father of three first made headlines 14 years ago, tracked down by a TV3 news crew atop Mount Tongariro. He was protesting against aerial drops of the pest control poison 1080. He'd hijacked a 1080 helicopter at gunpoint and forced the crew to drop him there. And I'm prepared, or was, maybe still am, to gut myself on this hill, no guns. If anyone Chris was talked down off the mountain where friends and family and the police were waiting for him. He served eight months in jail for that. Then in August, another mountaintop stunt, five nights in the open, demanding that network television screen a controversial anti-1080 film. You're a man obsessed, it's fair to say. Only as obsessed as everybody else that's trying to stop it. Um, I'm more of a doer than a talker. And that's probably the best way to describe it. Are you a nutter? A loony greenie? Um, no, I don't think so. <laughs> um, I'm just somebody that knows too much about what's really going on. We had a lot of deer signs so far. It's in the bush Chris is happiest, at peace. This looks like a good tree to put a trap on. Tongariro Forest, a cathedral of green, is a long-time haven for this hunter-gatherer. A little bit of a magic flower, flower and icing sugar. Put that up there like that so it stands up. Smell that. It's eucalyptus, isn't it? You said eucalyptus yeah, oil? eucalyptus oil. Mm. A little bit of flower and icing sugar. And that's a real yeah. lure, is it? Yeah. For someone who propelled himself into national notoriety with his mountaintop stunts, he's a surprisingly private man. Then we've got a bush robin there. He's heard us. He's coming to have a look. The other ones you've got to watch out for. Yeah, he'll come in there and he'll stand on that trap, and if it's too light, you'll snap him. But he sees his opposition to 1080 as something of a crusade. Shall right, we move we'll carry on? Carry on, shall we? Just got to stop the poison. Possum trapping's an alternative. It's the lesser of the two evils, as far as I'm concerned. It's not pretty. It's a dirty job, but someone's got to do it. Um, it sure as hell is a better way than causing no shit out of you. I need a break. What is it that brings you to tears? It's a broken bloody heart. <laughs> We're all supposed to be bloody Kiwis, <laughs> but there's not many of us that friggin' are. Originally, planes were used instead of helicopters, and the coverage... First trialled here in the 1950s, 
1080 poison is the preferred pest control of the Conservation Department, the Animal Health Board and various regional councils. Banned in many countries, New Zealand drops it from the air, raining down tons of poison bait on our forests and farms. We use more than 80% of the world's production. Its use is controversial, with long-held concerns about the damage done to other wildlife and the environment. These people have Opponents denounce the pesticide as an inhumane, indiscriminate killer, issuing grim warnings about contamination of the ground and our waterways. They say it makes a mockery of New Zealand's clean green image. We get dismissed into the loony bin because that's the best place to put us when we're a threat. This poor creature here has travelled about 400 metres out of the drop zone. Clyde Graff is one of the men behind Poisoning Paradise, the film Chris Short wanted us all to see, now being shown at public meetings and private screenings up and down the country. 1080 is used to control introduced possums and other wild animals. We also found Clyde and his brother Steve, Hamilton deer hunters turned filmmakers, spent a year documenting the fallout, filming in forests before, during and after 1080 drops, challenging the science that says it's safe. If the benefits are killing possums and rats, well, it does that. It does kill them. But if it's killing all sorts of other things, including livestock and pets, and, and there's no control over just what it's killing and how many of those other non-target species it's killing, then it's unacceptable. Weka are opportunists and scavengers. They captured on camera native birds at risk. A host of wildlife, dead or dying, they say as a result of 1080, either killed directly or indirectly by eating poisoned carcasses. Disturbing examples of the effects of the deadly pesticide on animals. Horses, dogs and cows dying a distressingly slow death. It's an essential tool, it's, it's efficient, it's effective, and with it, with Bill Fleury is one of Doc's top pest busters. He's been working with 1080 since the early days. We've got to keep these forests in good condition. This is the best tool we've got. If there is some collateral damage in that way, then, it, then you know, we sort of have to accept it because there isn't an alternative that's efficient, as efficient and effective and that we can afford. When, when the Department of Conservation says, well, it's acceptable to do this, well, we say, well, perhaps it is. Perhaps we are wrong. Perhaps we... Perhaps we are lunatics in this regard that it shouldn't be okay to poison a variety of non-target species while you're targeting another. So what we say is if people can watch the documentary Poisoning Paradise, make up their own mind then. This area has had 30 years of treatment of 1080 and you're not, there's no lack of, of native birds, there's cuckoos and tuis and things all around us today. Um, it's a pretty wet, miserable day, not a good day for bird watching, but you know, they're still here. Um, you know, if, if, if we were obliterating everything, this would just be silent, but it's not. Doc has its own disturbing footage of native wildlife being ravaged by predators. Possums raiding nests. A plucky kiwi in a fight to the death. In an ideal world, I guess we wouldn't be having to put any poison down. In an ideal world, we wouldn't have brought stoats, possums, rats, um, whatever, to New Zealand. As Chris Short sees it, there's got to be a better way, anything other than the poison. He rarely gets into the bush these days, spending more time around home. A self-taught artist, the shed where he keeps his traps is also where he sculpts. This one, trout, crafted out of matai. He also does the finest needle and ink work on a canvas of deer antler. It's a sanctuary from the 1080 front line. Who is it, what is it you feel a sense of responsibility for? Is it the land, is it your children, is it your grandchildren? Who are you doing this for? Yeah, the generations to follow, definitely. Um, this problem has reared its ugly head and shown us its hand in my generation. Um, and it's up to us to put a stop to it.